Hello everybody, welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are going to tackle some plant chores together and I'm so excited because the sun is shining. It's really feeling like the beginning of spring and that's my favorite type of energy to have flow in when we're working with the plants. Okay, so I'm gonna see what we have to tackle on our planty to-do list today. And the first thing, I'm actually quite excited about some of these, like, yeah, getting plants going for the growing season and everything. The first thing on my list is to pot up my philodendron Chironier. Um, if you missed it in one of my past videos, I ended up chopping up that plant because it was just one vine and I wanted to pot up a few separate vines and then put them on a moss pole and grow them out to be large because that plant is so phenomenal when it gets more mature. So yeah, that's definitely one of my top plants that I'm most excited about, like the growing this year and seeing it after the growing season. Um, so we're gonna be doing that and then the second plant that I want to pot up which is also um, Propagating right now is my anthurium viterifolium. I have like three different propagations going of it right now Plus I have a whole other plant. So my plan is to just be combining all of them into a larger pot um, and just growing like the one lush anthurium viterifolium so I'm really excited about that. I think that it's gonna look so good. Maybe not today, but you know, give it a few months once it settles in in the future, once it starts growing, I think it's just gonna be such a rewarding plant to watch grow. The third thing on my list is to pot up my Monstera dubia. And that is a task that, oh my goodness, it just got away from me. I have put it off for so long. It should have been potted up like months ago, probably. Yeah, I really dropped the ball on that one. So I need to get it potted up, want to get it going again so that it can be climbing up the plank. So we are finally gonna be doing that today. And then the last thing I have on my list is to propagate my begonia Sinbad because it's just like one plant right now and I really want it to branch out and to create like a more full begonia. So that is what we're gonna be working on today. And I am so excited. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have maybe some plant chores of your own to work on um, or a cozy beverage. Hope you enjoy. I do have a quick message from today's lovely sponsor before we get started. Today's video is so kindly sponsored by Native. I try to be as sustainable as possible throughout my daily life in a variety of different ways. And that's part of the reason that I'm such a big fan of Native's deodorant because there is the option for this plastic free packaging, which I just think is so great. Native's plastic free deodorants are the same formula as their regular deodorants, so they still work amazingly. They're just in a more sustainable packaging. It's recyclable and you save 37 grams of single use plastic with every plastic free deodorant that you use. It's not sticky, it dries quickly and the scents are amazing. I always have my two favorites on deck, the citrus and herbal musk, which is like more of like a kind of spicy kind of scent if you like kind of a deeper muskier smell. Um, and the other one that I love is lavender and rose, which is basically exactly how it sounds. It's floral, but in a really good way. If you love lavender, which I do, it's very calming and relaxing to me, um, then you'll love this one. There's such a wide range of scents available. There truly is something for everybody. And they're always releasing new scents and limited edition collections and things like that, which is very fun. If you use the link down below in the description box and my code WILDFERN10, you can get 20% off of your first purchase at Native. The offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time, so stock up and save. Okay, we're all set up for our first task of repotting my philodendron Chironier, which as you can see, there is three of them here. So this is technically the, I guess, the bottom cut, and it does have... A new growth point coming out right there which is really nice there's four leaves on this one and then we have the mid cut which is this one it also has four leaves and it also has a new growth point coming out there and then we have our top cut which is rooted in sphagnum moss this is the very oh there's actually two there's two in here this was the very top cut and it has this new growth point with a new leaf starting to emerge right there. And then I guess this was another cutting as well. I think I'm only gonna pot up three of them. I don't think I want more than three vines in this pot. And then I'll just save the fourth one for a trade or something like that. We are coming up to like plant trade season. So I'm kind of trying to keep that in mind um, as I'm going through my propagations and everything lately. 
So we are, of course, going to be adding a moss bowl because I want to grow this plant nice and big. So I was trying to decide which one I was going to go with. I have this thickly pole and this one from North Shore Tropicals. This one is smaller and thinner and I'm going to be working with like a pretty small pot size. So I'm kind of leaning towards going with this size. I think it's just going to be uh, I think it's just going to fit better, honestly. And I'll show you the pots that I'm thinking of. So we have three plants to fit in here. Keep that in mind. And a pole. I think right away, looking at this, that's going to be too small. So I was thinking of using one of these 4.5 inch plastic nursery pots because the Chironier does have a really kind of like fine, more delicate root system for a philodendron. So I don't want to over pot it. Even these ones potted up, like I don't see a ton of roots. So I honestly think that they're all going to be able to fit into something like this. The other option I have is just a little bit bigger and it's just this black one. But I kind of want to try going with this one because this is probably going to more easily fit into a cover pot if I want to put it in one, which I probably will eventually. Okay, I've just made my tea. So we're officially ready to get started. I'm gonna start by making the moss pole actually. So let's get set up for that. Before this video, I took Olive for WALK and it's so nice and sunny out. I'm in such a good mood today. It feels so great. I'm so freaking grateful. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this North Shore Tropicals pole, like I said, and I have my sphagnum moss here. Oh, it needs to be, it needs to be wet. Okay, that should be pretty good. We're not gonna need a ton of moss for this pole because like I said, it is just a pretty small one. Plant Haven Toronto recently did a restock and I saw that they had more of the philodendron Chironier and they also had some of the more mature, like a bigger plant version. And oh my goodness, it just looks so good. I cannot wait for mine to grow. Okay, I think that's gonna be pretty good. Let's try to close her up. I can have a hard time closing these. So see how it goes today. Wait, this isn't even like bent properly. Oh my goodness. Let me try to bend it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Got that on. Got that one almost. There we go. Okay. This is going better than the last time I did it. Perfect. I am just going to cut off these tabs because I don't use them. I just cut them off. Boop. Perfect. Random piece of perlite. I've got my potting mix beside me right here, all ready to rock. So I'm just going to start by filling this with a little bit. Okay, that was easy this time. I'm gonna add a bit of potting mix into the pot. Okay, so that's all ready to go. I'm just gonna leave it um, at the side there and then we're gonna unpot mm, the plants. Oh my goodness. So yeah, you can see what I mean. This has like, a pretty small root system on it. I can reuse that potting mix too. It's healthy roots, but it's small. If you can see. So, pop this gal in here.
This one has a strange looking root system because this was a mid cut, but the roots had traveled down into the pot. So there's kind of like a, a, just a few roots and then the root ball is kind of down here, but I'm just gonna plop that in. I'll organize it better after, but you get the idea. And then the one I'm most excited about, the top cut with the new leaf emerging. Let's unpack this and see what we've got going on. Just gonna gently remove the sphagnum moss and just kind of put it in the corner of my potting mat. The roots look really healthy on here. Small, but healthy. I don't know if you can see, but there's some like white fuzzy roots. Okay, so this is what the root system is looking like. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to get any more sphagnum off than that. I think that's pretty good but I'm just going to put it probably in the middle between these two in here. Okay, it's kind of hard for me to situate this backwards, so let me figure this out and then and then I'll show you guys. Okay, it's all done and I'm so happy with it. I mean, it looks crazy right now, like plants always do when you first put them on a pole, but then they'll all start kind of, the leaves will all start facing the same way and everything and it'll just look a little bit more, uh, like it makes a little bit more sense. But I'm super happy with how everything like fits. These all fit into this pot perfectly. And for this being just a plastic nursery pot, I actually think that this looks so cute. Like this like mint kind of green. I kind of like it with the darker green leaves. It's kind of cute. Um, anyways, pole is perfect. I have two strips of Velcro tape securing the vines to it. Um, hopefully those will continue to grow up and then it will eventually root into this pole. The middle one is not attached yet because it's not big enough. The top cut, that's this leaf right here. And then that new one is gonna come out right there. Um, but you can see the other ones are attached. Let's see if I can move some of these leaves over. Um, there's, there that you can see both of them actually with the growth points. They're both attached. So yeah, I'm gonna be watching this like a hawk. Can't wait to watch it grow. Um, I'll probably want to add an extension onto here once it starts growing. Uh, I'll probably do one extension and then once it reaches the top of the second one, I'll chop because hopefully by that point we'll have a little bit bigger of leaves and then we can restart the process. But yeah, super, super excited about this one. Okay, so next we are going to be working with Monstera dubia. Like I said, I should have potted these up a long time ago, but I didn't. I'm finally catching up, you guys. I finally have that spring burst of energy. Um, let me know if you're feeling the same way. Like, I feel like winter kind of makes me fall behind on plant chores because I'm just not as inspired or energetic or I don't know. I just, I, I'm catching up now and that's all that counts. Um, so this is the first one. These have both been rooting in perlite. 
I do still have a few of those single leaf cuts that are rooted in sphagnum moss. I'm probably just going to keep those as backups right now in case something happens to this pot or I don't know, someone wants them in a trade or something again. Um, but I'm just going to be potting up both of these today. Like I said, in perlite, they are quite well rooted, as you can see, which is really nice. And they both have shot out vines. So this one, the vine actually looks pretty good. Like this is quite thick already. Um, I could probably, depending on where I pot this in the pod, if I put it towards the back, I could probably attach this to the wood plank already, which would be really awesome. Um, and then it can shoot out leaves and everything. This one, however, has just shot out this spindly runner, which I'm not impressed by, and I'm gonna be mostly chopping it off, I think, and it can just shoot out new growth and start over because I'm not attaching this like skinny long runner onto the plank. It just has these tiny little piddly leaves. So I'll be chopping that, but first things first, I'm just gonna be going with a four inch terracotta to get these guys started. I was using terracotta the last time I grew my dubia up the whole moss plank, or moss plank, just, it's just a wood plank and it did really well in that. So that's why I'm just gonna be going with it again. I'm actually gonna use some of this potting mix that my Charonier was in because I might as well just use it. It's still good. So let's pull out this one first. Oh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, these have good roots by now, as they should. So like I said, I want this one to be pretty close to the back of the pot, so I'm going to do it like that, and then I'll see if I can squeeze. Well, yeah, we'll see. Let me take this one out. Might have to put this one in front of it a little bit, actually. I'm gonna have to kind of, or maybe, yeah, I'm gonna have to kind of stagger them. Okay. We need to cut off this runner because this is just gonna be annoying. I'm just gonna cut it off right here. So I need a little bit more potting mix. That's pretty much exactly where I want that one and where I want that one. Then I'll use some fresh potting mix as well. This is my new potting mix, which I'm really liking. I want to use it a little bit longer before I kind of like give my full thoughts on it. But so far, I really like it. It's not that much different than my other mix, but it does use actual potting soil rather than just the cocoa coir. So it's a little bit more nutrient dense and just like a little bit, there's more organic matter which I think my plants are really gonna enjoy. Okay, so we're in the bedroom now, and I think that I actually am gonna be able to attach the vine onto here already. So I'm gonna do that. I think that this is gonna be the new temporary location for the plank as well, which is not ideal. It's right in front of my shelf, but the Glorious is blocking the other spot. I wouldn't be getting any light back there. So 
I'm gonna have to rearrange some things, but for now, we're just gonna go with this. As you can see, I got the two cuttings in there, so we have four leaves in here, and the vine of the, like, further plant is back here, so I'm gonna have to wait a little while. Actually, you know what? It could probably attach pretty soon, honestly. But I'll wait until it grows a little bit more. We're also gonna have to move my staghorn fern after this because it's hanging out on the top of this plank and that is just not gonna work for this location. I have always just attached this plant to the plank with packing tape. It seems to work great for me and it's like fairly invisible, which is nice. So it looks pretty clean, but I'll just keep an eye on this guy um, and make sure he's like doing okay and starts growing soon. The soil was already pretty moist too. So I don't think I need to go ahead and water it or anything. Yeah, I think he's good. Wow, I can't believe we are finally starting over the Monstera Dubia. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Don't mind my laundry hanging in the reflection, but the plank is hanging out here. Look at it, it's getting some sun already. How nice. I'm in the way, kind of, but the sun is hitting it, which is really cute. Anyways, obviously not ideal to have the staghorn fern just hanging in the middle of the room like that, so I'm actually going to put a command hook there, and then we're going to hang it there, which is going to look so much better anyways. Plus, it's going to be getting light from my Soltec light, and it really loves that light. Okay, I have to wait an hour for the command hook to bond to the wall before we put the plant on it, so I'll update you on that at the end of the video. In the meantime, I'm gonna see what's next on our list. Okay, next we are going to pot up my Anthurium viterifolium. Okay, I'm so excited about this because I'm actually gonna be upgrading my Anthurium viterifolium to a hanging basket today. So I have this just plain white pot and a white hanger to go along with it. And I have four plants that we are going to be potting in here to fill this baby up. The first one is our plant that is already potted living in soil or potting mix. And um, it has some smaller leaves up at the top, but then it's shot out these bigger ones, like somewhat recently, which is really cool. And I didn't even really notice. They honestly snuck past me. And I'm always shocked that this plant is doing well or even living at all because this lives on... Uh, the windowsill in my bedroom above the heat vent, but it still grows. It still seems to be happy. It has a growth point right there. We're going to get a new leaf at some point. Really exciting. And then I have three propagations going. So the first one is in perlite, and you can see the roots right there. Very satisfying. Um, this plant's a little bit crazy, which I think is why I love it. If you have been on my channel for a while, then you know I love Strappy Anthurium. I have a few of them. I have my Politiflorum, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. This one, the Viterifolium, and then I also have the Bockery, which I think is considered like a semi-pendant Anthurium, but it's the same kind of vibe with the long slender leaves. So this is the next propagation that I have here, which is also rooting in perlite. And again, you can see roots in different parts of the cup. I don't think these are like super rooted, but honestly, this is a pretty hardy plant and I think it's gonna be fine if I just go ahead and pot it up and put it in a bright spot where it's getting a lot of light. And then the last cutting that I have is this one, which has been just rooting in water here with my 
variegated Hoya Bellas. Um, so look at those roots. Oh my gosh, it's so satisfying how chunky they are. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. So yeah, I guess I'll just leave that one out. So first things first, I'm just gonna fill up our pot a bit. Get a nice layer in there. And then let's, let's unpot the plant because I don't know how big this root system is. I'm assuming it's pretty, pretty decent sized, but we'll see. Oh yeah, you can see some of the roots at the bottom there already. Anthurium roots are so satisfying. It's one of my favorite things about them is they have like really, really chunky roots. Okay, I don't think I need to break this apart too much. I can see that it there's a pretty decent sized root system and they all look healthy and everything. So I'm just gonna see how full I need this pot to accommodate this plant actually that's like perfect that's literally perfect oh my gosh this is gonna look so good with them all in here <gasps> i'm so excited oh my gosh i actually ordered another one of those clamp grow lights for my bed too the same one that i already have clamped on there because it works so freaking well you guys like my, my hanging plants on there have never looked better so um, I'm probably gonna end up hanging this on my bed as well. And then I'll use that light, which is supposed to get here in the next couple. I think it's supposed to get here tomorrow actually. So I'll use that light um, for this plant as well. Okay, so we've got that one in. I need to wash these leaves again too. If you can see there's still sulfur on some of them, which I really hate. Ugh, I will not use sulfur again. I had such a hard time getting that off of all my plants. Okay, I'm actually gonna have to add more potting mix before we add the others in. Okay, so that one can go right there. Then I'm gonna take this one out of the perlite. Okay, so that is what we're working with on this one. Not too bad. I'm gonna try to, like I said, this plant grows so crazy. So the hardest part is trying to like maneuver it the way that I'm gonna want it. Okay, and then the last one, which this one is actually the top cut from when I chopped up the my other Viterfolium. The second one, I guess. And I just had the Velcro on here because this kept just wanting to pop out, but now it's rooted in here, so it's secure. And I had a little bit of moss too, which I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna top dress this pot with moss just yet. Oh, it was actually working too. Oh, a root was growing in there. How fun. Oh my gosh, I'll show you. This root was growing into the moss I put on there. Anyways, I was saying, I don't think I'm gonna top dress this big pot with moss yet because I don't want it to be staying too wet. It already is a fairly big pot for these cuttings. Um, I mean, there is like a fully rooted plant in there too. So I'm not worried, but I'll add moss at a later date. Oops, okay. This one does not have a very deep root system. Well, I mean, the roots look just so satisfying. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, they're not huge. Um, I'm gonna put this one in this side.
perfect. Oh my gosh, this is just like, wow. Okay, I'm gonna fill it up now. it's done oh my gosh it looks so crazy <gasps> imagine what this is gonna look like in like a year this is gonna look so good okay let me show you just wait just wait okay check it out oh my goodness I am just like wow I'm so excited about this it turned out so good and how fun is it gonna be watching not only one new leaf come in at a time but four new leaves because there's four plants in here I'm so thrilled about this. Let me know what you guys think. I'm actually gonna go shower this right now. Okay, while the anthurium drains in the bathtub, we are gonna start our last planty project today, which is um, a really quick one. I'm just gonna be chopping up this begonia sinbad. Look at how beautiful this begonia is. I wish the sun was still out so you guys could get the full effect. It's actually in bloom right now. Look at that, like how cute. I think that's why it's a little bit, um, floppy it's not thirsty or anything i think it's just maybe because it's blooming anyways i'll probably have to chop the blooms off just because i want the energy to go into creating roots but yeah let's just i'm gonna be just water propagating in this mason jar as well i am just going to go to town cut right here okay maybe i'll leave this base of it look at how cute i just love this begonia so much okay i'm gonna leave the base of it and then i'm just gonna pot everything together once these propagations root i'm gonna remove any leaves that are like mostly yellowed i think that's the only one actually then i'm just gonna cut these into separate pieces so i'm just gonna cut one piece whoop oh my gosh caught by the edge of the potting mat um, that's one, and then I'm just gonna go here, that can be two, and then actually this might just be able to be one cutting. I'm just gonna remove this lower leaf. I hate to do it, it's so pretty, but it's gonna be for the best for the rooting process. And I think I'm gonna remove the blooms too, which is like kind of hurts my heart, but oh my gosh, sorry, sorry. Wow, it's so cool. And then there's a couple more I'm gonna to remove too. And that's it. We now have three cuttings that we can pop in this jar. I really wanna grow a full a really like full lush version of this plant. I'm really obsessed with getting like big full begonias right now. I'm working on that with my Thurstonii at the minute. And I actually recently got a new begonia that I'll have to show you guys soon. All right, it's all filled up. I'm just gonna pop it back in the cabinet and that's that, super quick one. Okay, it has been over an hour now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop our staghorn on here. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Okay, that looks really good. It like fills in this planty area so much and it's low enough so that it is still benefiting from the grow light here, which is really nice because that's the whole reason that I moved it into here. 
And when you're just looking at it from the front, you can't see the command hook or anything because the cork obviously covers it, which is really nice. Super happy with how that looks. And then I've also hung up our Anthurium Viterifolium on the bed frame there, and I'm so happy with this. Like I said, I'm going to be getting another one of those lights as well, so I'm going to clamp it here, and then he'll be getting a lot of bright light. The sun is setting now, and my blinds are closed. That's why it looks kind of dark in here. But yeah, oh my gosh, I'm honestly like really, really excited about this. Let me know what you guys think. I did not know I had this much Anthurium Viterifolium happening in my house. All right, that's gonna be the end of my plant chores for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along. Thank you so, so much for watching, especially if you've made it to the end. I really appreciate that. Another huge thank you to Native for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out if you're interested. I highly recommend. Everything will be linked down below in that description box. All right, thank you guys so much again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.